Sunday. We're again joining together to worship the Lord. Isn't it wonderful that we can do this? Now, how are you? How's your week been? Has it been good with the schools going back or are you not enjoying the increased traffic on the road? You know, we, we want to get together uh, to join in fellowship and to discuss this morning's message. So if you're free at 11 o'clock, please do join us on Zoom. Well, we're in the period of Lent and in these weeks leading up to Easter, we are seeking out the ancient paths to learn how to follow God's way in our time by looking at the Beatitudes and how we can live them out today. Our preacher this morning is John and we look forward to his message in just a few moments. But first, I know that you will want to see what's happening in our building. It's quite drastic. The entire bathroom block has been pulled apart, leaving the bare walls and the roof beams. This is now ready to be rebuilt and restructured. The kitchen has also been stripped totally and is ready for the new cabinets and sinks. The floor hall has been stripped and sanded and is now ready to be repaired and then it will be polished and finished. And of course, they we've chosen the, the colour of the windows and the doors and the roofs being fixed and all of that. So everything is taking place. Thank you for your prayers. Please keep on praying that there, there's not any big major works coming up and that we'll be able to get back into our building in the expected time. Well, today is also Mother's Day. You know, for many, hopefully, it means a lovely day with breakfast in bed or perhaps a bunch of flowers and some chocolates, along with whatever hugs and kisses you can possibly get under lockdown rules. For others, though, we know it's perhaps a more difficult day, tinged with grief or pain or disappointment. And our thoughts, our love and prayers go out to you and ask the Lord to bring his consolation and comfort. To celebrate the wonderful role of a mother this morning, Becky is going to read to us a poem called God's Masterpiece by Herbert Farnham. God took the fragrance of a flower, the majesty of a tree, the gentleness of morning dew, the calm of a quiet sea, the beauty of the twilight hour, the soul of a starry night, the laughter of a rippling brook, and the grace of a bird in flight. Then God fashioned from these things a creation like no other, and when his masterpiece was through, he called it simply Mother. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth like the precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers, God bless each and every one, for all the tears and heartache and for the special work they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on, through many generations with God blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for they love with a higher love, from the power God has given, and the strength from up above. Thank you, Becky. That was great. Shall we pray for all those wonderful women in our lives who've been a mother to us? Father, we are so privileged to call you dad, but we also thank you that you provided us with mothers. Thank you for creating each mum with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self that each mum gives for her children. We thank you for the gift of time that mums give their kids, whether it's stay-at-home mums, working mums, or mums who have to do a combination of the two. We thank you, God, for, your fle for the flexibility of mums, for their tirelessness, for their perseverance and devotion. We pray that you give each mother strength, Help her to see in every mundane task the eternal significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical, world-changing events may actually be happening in her home. 
and help her to forgive those who sometimes maybe undermine her significance and her place. We also pray for the mother who's never given, given birth to children, but whose nurturing love and grace is shown to all those that they encounter. We thank you, God, how these amazing women enrich our lives and that we can call them family. So we ask you to bless our mothers, to be their strength and their place of peace. May they know that they are loved and honoured by us all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now over to John for our message this morning. Good morning. We have an opportunity today to look at a few of the Beatitudes as you're going through and studying that subject and that topic. And the Beatitudes are those um, lectures, those sermons, those messages that Jesus preached from the Mount when he spoke to the people, the disciples, and he gave them instruction relating to how they should live. Jesus always presented, um, of course, a message and a mission when he walked the earth that was something that each of us were to take on board, sometimes specifically to a group of people like the Pharisees or scribes, sometimes specifically to his disciples, but all the lessons carried on to everyone who has an interest in wanting to live a uh, good life, the life that God would have us live, a Christian life. And the Beatitudes touch upon subjects which needed to be explored and explained and looked at more in depth and yet presented so simply that any of us could understand. When we look for a definition of Beatitudes, it's easiest for me with my simple mind to consider that it's the attitudes that we ought to be like, be attitudes, the kinds of uh, ways that we think. So the two we're going to look at today are the subject of meekness and mercy. What does it mean to be meek and what does it mean to be merciful? The verses we'll look at, Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 and 7, skipping verse 6. But looking at the two of them, they're very simply said, verse 5 of Matthew 5, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Skipping to verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Looking at them in order, meekness is a word that we don't understand but think we do. Often we hear the word meek and we apply words like timid, timidity. We look at somebody who's a bit shy, a bit standoffish, who isn't really bold, doesn't carry a whole lot of power, and therefore they're meek. And we look at them in almost a synonymous way with weakness, meekness and weakness. They almost sound like they mean the same thing, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Meekness, when defined, has a very powerful definition. It's defined as meaning strength under control. A tremendous amount of power under control. Meekness is not weakness. If anything, it's such powerful strength that it doesn't need to show itself. I always picture those who shake their fist in the face of God and desire that God would strike them dead if he was real. Often you'll hear that uh, being presented by atheists. If God is really real, then let him strike me dead. And when it doesn't happen, they consider, see, he doesn't exist. God being all-powerful as he is, does not need to be swayed by someone shaking their fist in his face. Meekness is having the ability to do exactly what's being asked, but having it under control. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
I know that phrase is one that often strikes us as being irrelevant or not able to be understood. We would consider, okay, so I'm meek. What do I want to do with the earth? I mean, uh, it's it's hard enough for me to rule and, and to uh, take control of the things I have. What do I want the whole earth for? There are several ways we could look at it, and I'll leave it for you to study out and discover what might be the meaning of that passage, something that you might even in your own time look up. But for the sake of discussion, let's look at two things and throw them at you. One is, what if the word, the earth, or inheriting uh, the earth, is as if to say, blessed are the meek, because basically they can go anywhere and do anything they want, anytime they want. They have the ability to be able to know that they have control and strength. They have the ability to do what they need to do without hindrance or without concern. We hear the word sometimes, what do you want? The earth. You know, it's as if everything is uh, being offered in that uh, encapsulated word. So let's leave it at that thought for a moment to say, Maybe it's giving you everything you want. Maybe it's giving you everything you need. Maybe it's just providing you with the means by which to do what it is that you need or want to do. The meek have that capability if they keep their strength under control. I want to bring out three points quickly relating to strength. Strength need not be big to be strong. We often talk about the word being stronger than the sword. Sometimes an exertion of power doesn't have to come in the exercise of um, showing weaponry or strength of muscle. It can come in the way of winning an argument. It can come in the way of being able to present truth in such a way that it diffuses um, any violence so strength can come in many different fashions, and it need not be big. Another is, strength need not be loud. We live in a culture, in a day and age, where strength is uh, expressed in loudness. The louder you are, the more powerful your voice, the stronger you must be. Throughout Scripture, we are shown pictures especially I'll say, uh, captured by the thought uh, that God speaks in a still, small voice. Sometimes it's a whisper. Sometimes it's just knowing in your heart. God has a way of communicating with us that doesn't have to be loud, but it's coming from God. And if it's coming from God, that's all that's necessary to accomplish everything that needs to be accomplished. And strength need not be mean. Again, I think probably Hollywood's to blame for this one. But we see the portrayal of strength and meanness. Strength always comes in and always destroys, always seems to uh, show their weaponry in, in a big way in a, and, um, and exercising and... and, um, and it, um, demonstrating their power with uh, destruction and meanness. But strength need not be mean. I love the character portrayal of people who are shown to be strong and yet don't bully. They don't pick on others. They don't um, drive others down. If anything, their strength is held in such a way that they're protecting rather than brutalizing. So picture when you consider meekness to uh, be something different from the status quo or different from the stereotype that's presented in the world. The second is the word mercy. We see that come up in verse 7 of Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I love the verse, thinking of mercy, the mercy of God. So what is mercy? 
we define it best by saying it's not getting what we deserve. When uh, before a firing squad, uh, we, we have the illustration or picture, we find that someone is guilty and is uh, the, the law's punishment is that they stand before the firing squad. But when mercy is cried out for, if mercy is shown, then they don't fire upon them. They actually release them. That's mercy. The mercy is when you've been proven guilty and yet let go. So the blessed of the merciful are then those who turn around, having had mercy extended to them, become merciful themselves. With evidence stacked against us and the punishment set, we have no hope apart from mercy. The Lord then wants us to turn around and exercise that mercy towards other people, if it has been exercised towards us. So when I think of mercy, we can't help but look at the salvation that God has given us through Christ. We cannot ever deserve salvation. We cannot ever work to gain God's favor. No matter what we do, Everything we've done condemns us. It isn't our good works that will ever get us to a place to where we can uh, say, Oh, now I deserve it, because we never will. The only way that God saves us is through mercy. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. Titus chapter 3 verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. It is the mercy of God. It is the grace of God. It is the forgiveness of God that gives us what we have in Christ. There is no good thing within us, the apostle says of himself. There's nothing good within me. Everything good within me comes from God. And because God has given it to me, I can then extend it to others. We have that gift. We have that salvation available to us. And blessed are those who've experienced the mercy of God. Have you experienced the mercy of God? Have you asked for his mercy? Or are you still on the path of trying to somehow gain his approval, somehow deserve his grace? Because it's impossible and you never will. The only way we will ever have favor with God is because of his mercy. Because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to have forgiveness of sins we can stand pure before him only because of what Christ has done and for no other reason. If you've experienced that, you're blessed. And you have the opportunity to turn around and extend that mercy to someone else, both by sharing with them the gospel of Christ and also in practical ways. If you have been blessed, to bless others with portions of that which you've been blessed with. We have the opportunity to pass on the blessing, to pass on mercy to others. Considering the two together, we have the opportunity to be powerful yet in control. We have the opportunity to be merciful and to extend mercy to others. And by doing both of those things, among the other things that are mentioned within the Beatitudes, we can be blessed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessings you've extended to us because of what Christ did. Thank you for the good which is extended to us through Christ, both in mercy and in the opportunity to have strength in control. Thank you for setting the example for us for no Better example can anyone have other than the example that has been set for us in Christ, 
who being all powerful left the power of heaven to become a man and die on the cross. Thank you for the mercy that was extended to us, taking the punishment of our sin upon the cross. And Father, help us that we might extend mercy to others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. We look forward to sharing together shortly on Zoom and discussing how we can follow Jesus in being meek and merciful. Take care and we'll see you next week.